So once they finish with the presentations, so you guys can ask questions, and I think they will be able to answer all the questions that you might have. We want to say thank you, and right now, it's open. Hello, everyone. It is a privilege to be here. Uh, my name is Siobhan. I am uh, a mental health therapist. Um, I'll let you introduce yourself. Hello, and my name is Suzanne Wright, and I am also a mental health therapist. Um, it's a privilege to be uh, here with you guys today. Um, I know that this is a subject that we as black people, as Caribbean people, don't like to talk about. Um, we think that we just come to church and we pray it away and that's it. And while that is a good start, there's sometimes more to it, right? Um, can I see the hands of those who work? Anybody work? Go to work every day? Yeah? What about the hands of those who are moms, dads, grandparents? Um, sometimes do you get stressed about that? Do you get tired of going to work? Do you get tired of, of, of maybe, doesn't mean you don't love your kids, but do you get tired sometimes, right? As parents, as grandparents, as working people. Sometimes we get tired, and sometimes that causes us to get stressed, right? So not just stressed out about family, but stressed out about bills, right? Um, different family circumstances. There's a lot of things going on in the world today that will cause us to feel that way. I know there are some things going on in Haiti right now that is a, a big deal and some people are affected. And that can cause a lot of stress if you have people that are back home and you want to, of course, be there for them, but maybe you can't. And so um, stress can cause us to feel a lot of things that aren't, aren't good for our bodies, right? And so sometimes we need to do, um, along with praying, we need to do the work. And so we're here today to talk to you a little bit about self-care and what that means, okay? And if I'm, do I need to do some sort of a title to explain it more? Okay. All right. So we have self-care, a guide for Christian living. Can we go to the, sorry, the next one? Yes. Okay, so what is self-care? So self-care is literally taking care of yourself, whatever that may mean for you, and addressing those needs, okay? You go to the next one. So self-care improves your overall health, it lowers your stress, and that's linked to lowering your blood pressure. That's another thing that we as black people um, have in common, which is a bad thing, but we do have a lot of high blood pressure, right? We do have a lot of diabetes in our culture, and that's not good as well. So sometimes having that stress and feeling tired and overworked can, uh, of course, affect those things. And we don't, we want to be healthy. We don't, we want to stay out of the doctor's office and out of the hospital. And so that's important also to make sure that we stay as stress-free as we possibly can. Can I go on to the next one? Or you want to go back to the other one? Can you go on to the next one, please? Can I skip that? Or you want me to skip that? Okay. All right. So self care boosts your self-esteem. So that means treating yourself with kindness, right? The Bible talks about being kind to yourself. Um, and of course, being kind, you'll be able to see yourself more positive, uh, positively. So what does being kind mean? Does anyone have any, any thoughts about being kind to yourself, what that looks like? Yes, please. Yes. Oh, that's, that's coming up. So thank you for that. Yes. Learning how to say no, so that's setting boundaries. That is a big one. I think as 
Uh, we are all church-going people. Sometimes you have duties. And even though you may not have time to do something that's asked of you, we tend to say yes all the time, even though maybe we can't do it. And so that is a very, very important. Thank you for saying that. Self-care improves your focus. If you are less stressed, you will have time to focus on the things that matter. So that would be your family. That would be work. Um, that would be God. A lot of times we're too busy for God sometimes as well. We get so caught up in the things that we have to do. Um, I don't want to say forget to pray, but sometimes people do. Um, so that's also important. So knowing that you have to take care of yourself improves your focus. Okay? This is the boundaries. Self-care means setting boundaries. Like we said, having the ability to say no without feeling guilty about that. Right? So stop making excuses and postponing taking time for yourself. Has anyone ever felt guilty about saying no? Right? Exactly. That happens all the time. So we have to learn how to, to prioritize ourself. Um, and prioritizing ourselves does mean our relationship with God first, right? So making sure that we, we do what's needed first and then take care of other people after. I know most of us have been on an airplane. And so what do they tell you in the airplane? They always tell you when the oxygen mask falls down, who do you put it on first? Yourself. And then you put it on to whoever's next to you. Even if it's your child, you put it on next, which means you can't pour from an empty cup, right? So you gotta make sure that you're okay in order to make sure your family's okay. Okay. All right. So sometimes our choice of, of how we think makes us feel shame when we try to do something that is self-care. So that would mean sometimes we stop and think like, oh, well, Maybe sister so-and-so really needed me to do this. And even though I don't have time, maybe I should just say yes. Or, you know, maybe I just need to, oops, I just need to stay a little bit longer at work. But I know that maybe my kids really need me, but I'm going to stay. So sometimes we feel shame or we get shamed into saying yes to something that we know truly we don't want to do. And that, that sometimes is a problem. So here's our here's some some better ways or softer ways of saying no. You can say, sorry, I'm busy. Thanks for thinking about me, but um, I wish I could, but I can't. So I'd love to, but I'm already overcommitted, right? That happens a lot in church. I know that happens to me sometimes where I'm I double I actually did that today. <laughs> <laughs> where I'm, I'm here, but I'm also doing another presentation somewhere else, and it, it slipped my mind. And so sometimes you're, you know, you have to say no to things. Um, what do we have? Um, unfortunately, that's not something I can do at this time. Always a good one is no thank you. That's probably my favorite one, no thank you. Um, I already booked. Maybe next time. I wish I could, but I just can't. I don't think I'm the right person to help with that. That's also a really important one. Um, because sometimes people may ask you to do things that you don't really know how to do. Or it may not be something that you're interested in. But you do it anyway because you feel, you feel guilty about saying no. And so that's important to say, you know what, maybe there's somebody else that might be better at that. And that's, that's not a bad thing either. Um, oh, sorry, I can't help you at this time. It sounds fun, but I'm not available, or that's not going to work for me. All right, so here's a little pop quiz. Um, so true or false, is self-care only for people who struggle with mental health? It's for everybody. Everybody needs time away. Everybody needs downtime, right? It doesn't matter whether you um, struggle with a, a mental health illness or not. Everybody needs rest at the end of the day. All right, number two. 
self-care doesn't have any benefits, it's just an excuse to pamper yourself. False, false, okay, good. All right, number three, self-care is doing anything that soothes you. <laughs> I heard some trees. You think, you think so? Yeah, okay, it sounds positive. It's, it's actually false. It's like a trick question. It's actually false. Right, well, and this goes based on anything in moderation. So, so for instance, if, if your self-care is just laying around the whole day and you know you have things to do, then that, that's going to turn into you just being lazy, right? So you have to be careful of, of what that might look like. So, yeah, that was a, that was a right. That's a trick one. Um, what about self-care is selfish? Because I know some people think that. It's not. It's not. It's not at all selfish. Like I was saying before, you got to pour into you so you can pour into somebody else. Um, and this is a big one. Self-care is only for women. False. The guys need some love and tenderness too, right? They need care as well, for sure. So self-care does not have to be expensive, People feel that you have to go out and actually do stuff, go somewhere, buy some things, go to a spa, all that good stuff. Those are nice, but that doesn't mean <laughs> that that's what you need to do. Okay? So, nor does it have to be time consuming. Um, does anybody have self care ideas that, that you do? I like to hear, I'm, I'm an interactive person, I don't like to just talk. Reading, okay, yeah. Music, for sure. Anyone else? What do you What do you do? What is your What is your thing? Binge watch. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but that could get bad if you just if you're not it can. yeah. Moderation. Moderation. Mine is a weird one. Washing my face. I know that sounds weird, but I feel like after the day, right? Just to wipe like off wipe off the the day. Okay. Yes, yeah. just wipe it off. It's. I mean. For me, it's probably a little tight in the skin and just because <laughs> I like skincare. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's soap and water, so it's not it's not that bad. Anybody else? What do you guys do? What do you like to? Right. Yeah, of course. Yes, I like audiobooks also. I'm an audiobook person. Not the regular books, but the ones that sound like old time radio. I love those because you can just sit and just do other things while you listen. So yeah, those are really good ones. And if and if you don't have one, I encourage you to find something that you like to do and just take time, 20 minutes um, out of the day. I don't know if that's a lot. That might be a lot for some people. It depends on what you're doing. But at least that, um, I would say equate it to your prayer time. The time that you take to pray, I would say take another spot in the day and take some self-care time as well, okay? The next one, please. That's a great one. <laughs> what, shopping? Shopping. That also can get out of hand. <laughs> but, but it is a good one, but it can get out of hand too. All right. Um, so self-care can be displayed in many ways, like we just said. Sometimes self-care is enjoying a cozy night alone. Other times, like we were saying, other times um, it can be asking for help when life gets you down. And I know, like we were saying in the beginning, that's a hard thing for us. Um, as black people, as Caribbean people, we don't like to ask for help. We don't like to talk about our feelings. Um, but I will encourage you, if there is something that is bothering you and is on your mind um, and it is causing you to not do what you would normally do in the day, right? And so that would mean uh, some for some people getting up, right? For some people going, brushing their teeth, taking a shower. There are some people who do feel that badly and can't get out of bed. And it doesn't necessarily mean um, uh, they're in pain physically, but they might be in pain emotionally, like just feeling sad, so sad that they can't, they can't get out of bed. That has that does happen. So if you do feel like that and it's stopping you, 
from going to work, seeing your family, being with friends, um, I would encourage you to find someone to talk to about that. And it, it doesn't have to be a therapist, it can be a close friend. You know, reaching out, sometimes that's hard. Um, but the other part of that, if you see somebody within your family or your church family that is acting a little differently, maybe they were always saying good morning and hi and how you doing and now they're quiet and not really saying a whole lot and maybe something has happened or that you know of um, you know, in their life, I would encourage you to talk to that person um, and pray with that person. But beyond that, ask that person how you can help them. And if they don't know, then there are resources that, will, that you can find to help them. Um, and we're always here. We will be happy to give, up, give, um, give you our information for you to come talk to us, right? Our door is always, always open. Um, okay, so here are some biblical reasons for self-care, right? So this one says practice quiet time to avoid information overload. We are all glued to our phones, at least some of us are, most of us are. Um, and that can, be, that can be tedious sometimes. So Mark 6, 31 says, then because so many people were coming and going, that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So the Bible does tell us that we need rest, right? We know uh, that we are here and it's the Sabbath and we, we are resting today, but in general, sometimes our minds just need to be turned off and we need that rest, that's important. Um, the other one says, work out and find ways to stay active. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 says, uh, do, you know, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought with, at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. So we do know that. We know we teach that our, our body is a temple. And so that also means for us to stay active. Right. And so to, to be doing something, if you can't uh, do a whole lot of exercising, just just walk, even if it's up the block and come back. Uh, the, the little bit that you can do just to keep active, a body in motion stays in motion. Right. OK. All right. So eat well balanced meals. First Corinthians 10 31. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. So we know that how we are uh, to be eating, we have a health message. You guys have heard all of that before. So just making sure that you eat well. Um, that is also self-care, not overindulgence, but eating, eating well. Um, and lastly here, meditating on God's word. Proverbs 17, 22, a joyful heart is, is good medicine, but a broken spirit dries up the bones. We know that God's word is um, our refuge and is something for us to meditate on. So to continue to do this. I just put this here because I thought this was good. These are one of the worksheets that I use uh, with clients sometimes. It's called a, a self-care assessment. It just kind of assesses whether, whether you have good self-care or not. Um, and sometimes we think we do. I've taken this a few times and not gotten a, a really good score. So <laughs> um, we all could do better in our self-care. Um, is there anything that any of you, by just as talking, can do better in? You think you can do better by, by what we've said? Anything that comes to mind that you feel that you could do better when you go home with giving yourself self-care? Sure. So that, yeah, for sure, slowing down. That's always a good one. Okay, calm down. Good job. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Yes. people should do that and that's something that we all probably really need to practice weekly 
giving that, and it doesn't matter how small it is, it matters, and it, it means the, um, the most to us. So absolutely, very good. Yeah, for sure. That's so good. Thank you. Anyone else, anything that you that you would like to do better in? I know sometimes we don't like to, because that's probably negative, but something that you feel that you could do better in this week. Just the week. We won't go far as to say forever, but just the week. Anyone? I like interaction, guys. Talk to me. Anyone? Anyone, something that you would like to, to do better this week? Yes, please. Say again? The way you eat. Yes, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I think I could sla snack less. I'll try. At least. Okay. Um, can you go? I think the the next one has um, the yeah the spiritual one. So this one is is basically asking how um, how much of this do you do you actually do? Do you spend time in nature? Do you meditate? Do you pray? Um, do you recognize the things that give meaning to your life? Right. Um, act in accordance with your your beliefs and what we believe. Um, set aside time for your thoughts and reflections, and sometimes we don't, we don't do that. Um, and appreciate, oh, this says appreciate art or something mean, meaningful to you. Um, so there's different, there's different ways you can give yourself self care. We talked about uh, saying no, um, learning new things um, outside of work or outside of things that you already know, learning a new hobby or, you know, a new skill. Um, taking breaks. Does, how many people actually take breaks at work? I, I mean, not the, not the ones that are scheduled. <laughs> not like like not like a lunch break, but outside of that, does anyone take actual breaks outside of that? Like time to breathe, or time to like get up, walk around, come back, water something. So those are those are important too. Time um, time away from your screens is also a, a good one and a hard one, uh, you know, the age that we're in. But time away from your screen is also a, a really good one. Okay, let's go one more. I think we're, we're about done, but there's one more slide, I think. Do you go forward one more? Yes, I like this wheel. Um, so this one has all the self-care practices from spiritual to physical, um, social, emotional, and intellectual. Um, there's a lot there. I don't even know if you guys can see some of that, but uh, s some of them talk about um, making time to laugh, right? Uh, spending time with your family, your friends, uh, putting together a puzzle, learning a new language, um, enrolling in a class, um, doing other various uh, projects. What is that called? I think it says cuddle with a soft sweater. Those are I like loungewear. So those that's good too. Um, so yeah, I think that's about it. That's it. Any any questions? Is this new to you guys? Do you guys know about self-care? Is it something that you have have done before, thinking of doing again? No? Does, should I? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm really interactive. But any questions? So if you guys have questions, uh, just raise your hand and I will give you the mic. So you feel free to ask questions. And it's okay, you can say that in Korean and then we can translate that in English to them so they can uh, answer you. If you have a question, you can lever your hand. It doesn't have to be just about this. It can be about anything mental health also. Whatever. Okay. Uh, 
Hello, good afternoon. Um, what would be like a good idea of diet? Because I spoke about food earlier. So what, what would you recommend for like breakfast, lunch, and dinner? We, we, are, we are not dietitians. <laughs> I'm just wanna, asking. No, 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 I hear you, and I thank you for the, the question, but I don't want to give you a wrong thing because I'm not, um, we're not doctors, <laughs> so we wouldn't know specifically. Um, all I can say is that n everything in moderation, right? So you don't want to overindulge in whatever it is that you're planning on eating. Um, of course, I'm sure we all like uh, maybe certain junk we shouldn't eat uh, sweets and, and the like. So I would say um, making sure that those meals are balanced, whatever they are, um, making sure that you have healthy amount of protein, of fats, of carbs, um, and just making sure that you stay, um, just don't overindulge, I think would be the best thing. Because believe it or not, our food, uh, exercise, your whole well-being does affect your mental health as much as people may not think that. Um, there are certain foods uh, or certain diets, bad diets, is when I say diet, I mean something bad um, in this case, that are linked to um, having more, uh, more of a bad effect on your mental health. So you want to make sure that whatever you're doing, that you're staying well-balanced and, of course, um, drinking enough water, walking, uh, the whole nine yards. So just making sure that you're doing those things, I think, that, that you need to add. And just make it sustainable for you. To, s to say that you're going to cut things like completely and totally out like in one day's time, that's not feasible. And it's not life because even if you can do it for a, a, a certain amount of time, after that certain amount of time comes, things happen, you fall back into those patterns. So if you just kind of create something that's easy for you, you can make it work. Thanks for the question. I got a question. Um, what would be your advice regarding anxiety and depression? Advice as to give me some more, give me give me more to the question. As you know, right now <laughs> a lot of people being depressed, mm -hmm. young people, adult, and yeah. they don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. They tend to uh, they're gone to kill themselves. Mm -hmm. So that's why I said, what will what? be your advice? Um. Well, my advice to life is hard, right? I, I think. Um, I'm, my, my parents are from the Caribbean also, so I, I get, I get that specifically for our culture, that no one kind of told us, I don't want to say how hard it would be, but in a sense how hard it would be, right? We were just kind of just told to go to school, learn, and, 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 and then everything else will follow, um. And so I sometimes think we, we're not, we don't learn the tools to be able to deal with the stress of life sometimes, right? And so we also think that it's, it's normal. And although some stresses are, stressors are normal, it's how we deal with them. So all of this is coping, right? How we cope with, with um, feeling down, with feeling sad. So if what you would normally do is to lock yourself up in your room and just cry about it and don't, don't uh, talk or don't, um, don't tell anyone how you're feeling, of course that could lead to what you're talking about. That can lead to ha you know, getting a gun or hurting yourself or, or whatever it may be. So what's necessary is for us to develop coping skills to help deal with the things that make us sad. And so that's what self-care is. Self-care is taking the time out to care for yourself enough that you learn as you go on. And sometimes, uh, you know, habits build. So in other words, uh, my self-care at my age now in 10 years might be something completely different, right? Because I'm, ch I'm changing, right? We all are. So learning what 
what you like, what things uh, make you happy, right? Whatever that may mean, that may be spending time with your kids, that may be, you know, in the room, like you said, just, just being, that may be music, that whatever that thing is, learning what those are so that when you do feel sad, you have something to turn to, to liven the mood. It doesn't mean it'll make it go away, but at least you have something to cope with feeling down. I would also add to that, I think everyone has to pay attention to themselves. I think it's one thing is really hard to do because life happens so fast is that we don't take the time to sit with ourselves. So you don't always necessarily know yourself. So you think, oh yeah, today I just maybe had a bad day. So that's why I'm feeling the way I'm feeling. And then tomorrow it was somebody annoyed me. And every day it's like something happens that you feel like it's causing you to feel that way. But you're not really taking the time to feel like, is, are, is it really these situations happening? Or is it that I myself am just going through something at this time and I am not sitting with myself to try to figure out what that is so then I can try to process through it? I think a lot of times people think that I feel sad today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to feel better tomorrow, or even if I don't feel better, like it eventually will go away. But you have to figure that out, what it is, and then you, like she said, like Tavon said, you incorporate your coping mechani mechanism. So I've, I've been feeling down. I've been feeling sad for a couple of days. So guess what? You know what? I know music is what helps me. Maybe there's certain types of music, but whatever it is, you have to start to implement those. And when you get to a point you realize that maybe you need to add something extra, you have to know who your support system is. Everyone has one, and we have to make sure, even if you feel like you don't have one, then it's up to all of us as a community to come together and make sure we're that we're that support system for others as well. Because sometimes maybe I can't see how I'm acting on a day-to-day -day basis, but maybe Siobhan can see, and Siobhan can have that conversation with me to say, I don't know if you paid attention, but you've been real bitey lately. Like every time I say something, you're like, and I'm like, really? And so then I have to check myself, but it's up to us as a community to do that. And I think that that's where we're kind of starting to fall a little short. It's like every man for themselves, but we have to remember that everybody can't do everything for themselves. We are a group. And I understand that. I, I think that that's a good point. And if, if you feel like that, most likely there's somebody else and others that feel the same way too, right? And so that's, that's where we have to start building that. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not saying you're wrong. If, you're, you, if that's how you feel, then, that's, then that's, that's true, right? But I'm wondering, I don't know if everyone heard what she said. And, and she made a good point. Even though I know you don't want to call your call you out but <laughs> you she said that she there's she doesn't feel that every that there's a community here for for the for the Haitian community here in Point Siena and I'm saying if she feels that way then there might be other people that feel that way and if that's the case we need to start making ourselves a community that we all can find support with um and so, so that's important. The, you have to build that, right? It can't just be, um, you know, a one-off. It, it has to be built. The community has to be built within, within ourselves. Where, so then when you start to feel a certain way, like Suzanne was saying, you know, but I'm, I, so tell, I'm sorry, tell me your name. Jocelyn. So Joc, I'm sorry, I'm going to pick on you because we, we just started the conversation. So. Jocelyn, if, is there somebody, you don't have to name names, is there somebody within this church, within this community, that if you were feeling sad, would pick up on you feeling sad, or pick up on you feeling angry that day? Do you feel that there's somebody here that would say, Jocelyn, like, what's going on? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a good point. No, that's a good point. I, I, I empathize with that. And I also feel that that it's okay. I'll, I'll reiterate for her. I also feel that my mom always says, don't give, don't give what you can't afford to lose, right? So in other words, you don't have to give your whole story, right? To me, just just enough for the person to know that there's something wrong. Right. It doesn't mean you got to go into this deep conversation about whatever is going on. And when we talk about community, we're trying to say that. And I and I am and I'm I'm charging this this congregation um, and Elder Chris, I, I'm going to put you in that charge and challenge that. If someone is is reaching out for help, right, they don't need to come with the whole story. Right. All you need to say is, I don't feel like myself. I haven't been feeling like myself in a long time. That should be enough for your brothers and sisters in Christ to say, Jocelyn, okay, we have you. That, that of course, will include prayer, but that also should include them trying to find someone for either you to talk to, if you're comfortable with that, or finding out how can we help you. Because it may not be a talk, right? It may be, I don't know if you have children. I'm just throwing this out. Okay, so it may be, oh, maybe you need someone to maybe take the children for a couple of hours for you to get some quality time somewhere else, right? Because it doesn't necessarily mean that, oh, my goodness, you need to talk to a therapist right now. It, that doesn't, doesn't mean that. You, just need, you may need a reprieve. You may need just some time, right? But... We, we need to create a community where all it takes for Jocelyn to say, or anybody to say, I'm picking on you, but anyone to say is, I don't feel good. Like, I haven't felt well in a minute, and I need some help, whatever that help is. And then what should the follow-up question is, how can we help? That's it. Whatever that is, right? And it, it may not just be kids. It may be, maybe I haven't eaten in two days. I mean, there's 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 other parts to that, right? So, or or maybe you know, I've been wearing the same shirt for a week. We don't know, but what we're saying is, we need to be here to help each other, whatever that may be, right? And so that's that's really what uh, building the community is supposed to be for. And I get what you're saying; you're not wrong because I know that's what a lot of churches feel that I don't want to I don't want to talk my business to people. Because next thing you know, everybody knows what I just told you. And we also have to create safe space, right? I know that's sometimes not a word people know, but safe space, meaning what we say here stays here, yeah. right? So, but you also have to know who to go to, right? I know that I trust Chris, and so I will go to Chris and say, Chris, I need help. You know what I mean? But obviously, if sister so-and-so, who you don't know from Adam, come up to you and say, Jocelyn, do you need, I'm not talking to them. I don't know them, right? So we have to create that, um, so that so that everybody feels safe, so that everybody feels like if, you know, if, if, if I fall down tomorrow, my church family, they got me. They're going to be there for me no matter what. That's important. We have to create that. But I, thank you. That's a big one. So I'm going to charge Chris with trying to make that happen. I would gladly be a part of that. What? Oh. Okay, so we have a question online. It says, how do you handle a narcissist and maintain your <laughs> sanity? Oh, that's a hard one. Yeah, I, I want to stay to stay away from them, but some sometimes they they're in our families, and so that's hard to stay away from. Um, you have any thoughts before I chime? I, I think that you recognizing that they're a narcissist is the first part of it, and then you having to, if they have to be somebody that's in your life, 
you have to be able to set up what we talked about earlier, healthy boundaries. Healthy boundaries in the sense of I am not going to allow this person and their behaviors to allow them to affect me, my behaviors, my thoughts, my feelings, or anything else. I have to accept that person for who they are and for how they present to me, and I have to value them and for who they are. And But for myself, it doesn't mean that I can – I have to deal with it. I have to deal with it in my own accord with my own boundaries. So I think most importantly is that if you're saying that you recognize that there are narcissists, you have to be willing to say, what are my boundaries? What am I willing to go there with this person and um, do and say and act and what I'm not willing to do? And that, for me, is the only way that you can deal with a narcissist or anybody with any different personality. Okay. You got it. I mean, you hit the nail on the head. That's, that's probably the biggest thing. Yeah. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Happy Saturday. I do have a question. I'm not sure if you guys kind of touched on this already. Sure. But we know that there's a stigma along with us as Caribbean folk or black folk mm -hmm. that, hey, you know what? Mental health is not something in which we prioritize. Mm -hmm. We'll prioritize the health message in terms of eating the right mm -hmm. foods, making sure that we're physically healthy. But yeah. mental health is not something in which we really prioritize or really give the, you know, the – how can I, the focus or emphasis sure. that definitely is there. Mm -hmm. What is there something you can elaborate on, on, you know, kind of what we can do as a, you know, because the word community came up, mm -hmm. you know, because that may also be part of the reason. Mm -hmm. Hey, it's not something we talk about, so there's no yeah. community that yeah. can be formed for it. Sure. So is there any kind of, I want to, I don't want to just say ideas, but is there mm -hmm. anything that you can go ahead and say we can implement to kind of make it a norm for us sure. in our communities to prioritize and emphasize mental health well-being? Sure. I think it goes right back to that word, safe space. We create that safe space. Everything else, sh I don't want to say should fall into place.